All right, so what I've got here, this is an IBM, uh, I think it's a TS440. Yeah, TS440 Think Server. This is going into a client site where it's going to manage their uh, SQL database that they run, and it's also going to do some authentication. It's a one server site, not very big. They've only got three users on site, but they host a portal where their clients log in and can check on their usage of their, of their product that they supply. So again, it's a TS440 server. I'm going to pop this open. We've got a lot of extra parts to pop into this as well, so I'm going to video all of that process as well. Let's fire it up and see what we got inside here. So with the system, we've got our uh, startup configuration CD, this will do your RAID configuration, and our documentation DVD. Um, came with two power ports and their you know useless documentation. This thing is a pretty heavy server. I've gauged it around 40 pounds or so. Not real easy to lug around. It's a tower server. And once I get this unbagged we'll put it up on the workbench and go through the internals on it. There we got the front end of it anyway. Uh, I've got a couple of USB 2s on the front and DVD-RW built into this. It's a Xeon processor. I don't recall, I don't recall what the gigahertz are on this one, but good, good midline processor. We'll be loading Windows Server 2012 on this for internal use at this client site. All right, so we're up here on the workbench with the IBM TS440. Um, real simple machine to get into. There's just a thumb screw on the back of this. This is the tower server. They may make this server in other formats uh, with the same guts, but the, this particular one, this particular customer needs a tower. They don't have a rack to put this in. It's going to go inside their little server closet. So there's a thumb screw on the back of this. It pops open. There's also keys for this device uh, attached to the back of the server when you pick it up, so don't forget to grab those off there. Inside we see just a basic motherboard in here. It's not anything crazy. You got a few expansion slots, uh, PCIe, you know, the standard fare for that. Um, this came with four gigs of RAM in it and a Xeon processor, uh, gigahertz. I don't really recall exactly how many gigahertz it is, but standard fare for this type of uh, the server. Not real high end, but it doesn't need to be. Uh, single power supply in this one. Um, it is capable of two power supplies, so we will be adding another power supply to this. We'll also be maxing out the RAM in this, or not maxing it out, but upgrading it to 16 gigabytes from 4 gigabytes. So we'll have three more 4 gig sticks to put in there. Um, the RAM slots are color coded, so you want, if you have only two sticks, you want to populate your blues and then populate the green uh, slots as well. So you always want to populate them by color to. Uh, allow the system to do what it needs to do. Um, we'll also be installing a bunch of hard drives in this system as well. And as far as expansion goes on it, basically it's just a PC style motherboard. So there's nothing real fancy about this. We've got four uh, USB 2 connectors in there, two regular USB. We've got your network connection on the back of this. It does only have a single network card on board. So if you want any more or need any more network, you'll have to use the expansion slots. On the front of the system, it's got two bays for uh, adding drives. This particular one only came with four, so we'll be adding four one terabyte drives into the system to create two mirrors, a system mirror and a data mirror for their database and stuff will go on the secondary mirror and the, and the system and probably some program files and stuff will go on the system mirror. So we'll have a C drive and an E or a D drive. So we've got uh, the spare power supply here, fresh in the box from Lenovo. This system was ordered by the client, shipped directly to us. I worked with the supplier, uh, in this case it was Insight, to get the configuration the way the client wanted to do it. So we just charged them a little extra to go through that process with the vendor and make sure they're getting exactly what they need because a lot of times the vendors aren't familiar with the applications that the client is running. So this is our redundant power supply for the TS440. 
They're a real basic power supply, not very big, a hot swap power supply. Again, you know, this is just to ensure that we have as little downtime as possible. Obviously, if the power goes out at the location, they're, they're still down, but this way, if we lose the power supply, they're still up and running, and we've got time to get that up and back in shape for them. Uh, we also ordered an additional 12 gigabytes of RAM for this system. Uh, the system will be running SQL, and it will be running a utility tracking program as well that the clients will be able to log in through a web page, through a portal, and see their usage, in this case, of uh, water that goes through their system. So we've just got three of these four gig sticks. Apologize for the lighting today. We are working on a couple of uh, older IBM servers today. I'll zoom over there. But I'm having to share lighting because lighting I've obviously got two systems over on the workbench that are currently loading an operating system for a trouble ticketing system that we're putting together. So we've got lots of stuff happening in the shop today. So basically we've got a four gigs, three four gig sticks of RAM that we're going to be putting into that server as well. And to top it off, I've got uh, four one terabyte drives should be inside this box. So these terabyte drives, if I got what I ordered, are the Western Digital Red drives. So let's find out, make sure we got what we really said we were getting. No, we did not. So somewhere in the mix here, we ended up, instead of getting the Western Digital uh, red drives that I thought we were getting, we got Lenovo's, Lenovo branded drives. These are Seagates. I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, I have had a bad run of luck with Seagate lately, but uh, I, it'll probably be all right. And they're all under warranty, so I'm going to pop them in there anyway. I'm not going to complain about it. It's, uh, it's likely that something happened um, between the client and our supplier where the drives got changed out there. It's happened to me before. But they should be all right. They're brand new. They're warrantied for three years. We should be in good shape. There really isn't anything to installing the drives on these. Uh, it's quite simple. Uh, these are hot swap drives. So uh, if you have a drive filler, failure, you can just take uh, the failed drive out and throw the new one in. Uh, the just need to remove the blanks out of here, which you can see is very simple. And you install your hot swappable SATA drives, and they just clip right in. And you've got your release button. And that's all there is to the installation. There's a little bit of hoops you got to jump through when you uh, install the operating system, but they provide a setup disk with this and make it pretty easy to walk right through that installation procedure. RAM installation of these, just like any other PC, you want to maintain ground to your device. You can use a wrist strap if you'd like, or, or you just need to make sure that you know your arm, wrist, elbow, something is touching the frame of the server while you're working on this. You do not want a static charge going through any of these chips while you're working on them. I'm going to disconnect a couple of these power cables because just to get them out of the way, uh, it's not necessary to do this. I just want to get it out of the way so you can see easier what I'm doing in here. So I'm grounded to the case right now, outside the frame of the camera. And like I noted before, there's a blue and a green slot. And you want to, if you're only running two memory sticks in here, you want to run them in the blue slots. Um, if you're running more, you just want to put them in pairs. So if you've got two two gig sticks and two four gig sticks, you just want to match those pairs, you know, two gigs in the blues, four gigs in the greens or something along those lines. Just check your memory. There's a, a keyway in the stick that lines up with a keyway in the memory slot. You slide that in nice and straight. Press down firmly. You want to make sure it's straight. And those ear tabs will snap right in if you're doing it correctly. That's really all there is to it. I'm going to pop a couple more sticks in there, but uh, it's going to be hard to see because, well, they're going to be behind that one. So you get the idea.
When I'm done, I just make sure all the tabs are totally connected in there. Everything's nice and tight. Everything is seated properly. As far as the redundant power supply goes in this, if you've got a redundant power supply in here, they've got a lever. This is what locks the power supply in place. If you've got to replace one, you push it in, power supply slides out. When you push it back in, clips in place, super simple. Uh, the blank, you just lift up on the lever and your blank comes out and that's just to aid in cooling on the machine. You want to make sure if you're only running one that you do have that blank in there. As far as uh, installing the new, the secondary power supply in this, I like to stay grounded to the system whenever, whenever I'm handling any components. Power supply is probably not that big of a deal, but better safe than sorry. So I always make sure I've at least got a hand, an elbow, a forearm, or a wrist strap on to ground me to the system that I'm working on. Uh, it's real simple, this slides straight in, same exact configuration as the one next to it. Clips in, thumb lever here, locks in nice and tight, and as you can see it's in there. And that's all we need to worry about. We can go ahead and plug that in and get the configuration started on this thing. As I'm booting up the system, hit Control i to get into your RAID configuration. I, I ran through this once before. I'm just going to show uh, how to delete these. You can see here we've got 884 gigs uh, showing on each one of these RAID mirrors. But I'm just going to go ahead and delete these and set them up again. So uh, hit the delete key. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes. Hit the delete key. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. So let's create a RAID volume. So now you can see uh, our size of our drives is 931.5 gigs for just the plain drive, right? I'm going to create a volume. I'm going to call this volume system because that's how I like to name it. You hit the enter key. Um, you use the arrow keys to select which RAID array you want to do. We're going to do a RAID 1 mirror on this just for performance reasons. We'll select our disk, so we hit enter. Use the space bar to select the disk. I'm going to select disk 0 and select disk 1. Press enter to continue. Now you notice we've got 884.9 gigabytes now. We lost a little bit of data space because of the mirror setup. Hit enter again. Create the volume. Yes, we want to create it. If you'd had data on those disks, it would wipe it. I'm going to create another RAID volume. I'm going to call this one data. And I'm going to set this as a RAID 1 mirror. Hit enter to select my disks. I'll hit a space bar, and since there's only two disks left, it knows it's a mirror and it's going to highlight those two disks automatically. Hit enter to complete that. Hit enter again. Hit enter to create the volume. Yes, I'm sure. All right, so now we're showing two mirrors. We've got member disk 0 and member disk 1, and those are the two mirrors we've got. It shows the disk size is at 931, but note up here, we've got a disk size of 884.9. I'm gonna use this later during installation to make sure that I'm selecting the right drive to uh, install the operating system on. I'm gonna hit number four to exit. Yes. And it's gonna boot up into the system configurator now. 